Good evening everybody, how are we all doing? Hope you're all having a good week so far. So today is Thursday the 22nd of January 2016 and I'm basically here to just sort of like talk about the week that we have had so far which has been absolutely epic. It's been a huge week for DC Comics and Warner Brothers all together. Um, they showcased Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman, we've got our first real footage of Wonder Woman. Suicide Squad trailer drops, this is actually the first trailer, not counting the one that came out from Comic Con um, last year in July. So this is the actual, this is the first proper sort of trailer for um, Suicide Squad pretty much that's going to be released to the public. Um, and I'm guessing in cinemas very soon, no doubt probably we'll see it at the beginning of um, Batman v Superman in March, so that'll be awesome, uh, which was absolutely splendid. Um, I love the use of the um, Queen uh, Bohemian Rhapsody tune playing to the trailer. It was absolutely brilliant. Seeing all the characters as well, Jared Leto's Joker, uh, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, Deadshot played by Will Smith, Captain Boomerang by Jai Courtney. They they are all looking amazing. And of course, Vi Viola Davis as um, Amanda Waller. Um, I can't wait. It's going to be so wacky. It's going to be so fun. It's different. And definitely a big risk for uh, for Warner Brothers um, just like in the same guise as what Guardians of the Galaxy was for uh, for Marvel um, a couple of years back so yeah it's going to be something interesting I really am looking forward to it um, yeah so as I say Wonder Woman, Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad they also showed um, concept arts for Cyborg, Aquaman, The Flash and they did talk about the Green Lantern Corps. We still don't know who the characters are going to be in that film, who's going to play Green Lantern, which one are they going to use, John Stewart, Hal Jordan, Carl Rayner. We don't know. <laughs> but they showed those concept art artwork for the for the other three characters, um, as I say, Cyborg, The Flash, and um, Aquaman in particular. Um, did anyone notice Ray Fisher's T-shirt that he was wearing during his interview? Like where he was talking about the film, it says Borg Life. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty, pretty snazzy, very, very well fitting. Um, incidentally, if you're wondering, the t-shirt that I'm wearing, this is a fresh new Batman v Superman t-shirt from SuperheroStuff.com. Okay, um, they have some, just just a small section of new Batman v Superman stuff. I think there's three t-shirts and a couple of boxes as well. So um, I'm sure that their product line will increase as we draw closer to the uh, to the movie's release in March 25th. So yeah, get yourself on superherostuff.com. This is where you can bag one of these bad boys. Um, and obviously on the flip side of, of, of DC Week, we have the TV shows. Everything's back, well, almost everything. We started off on Monday with Supergirl, and on Tuesday with The Flash, and then Wednesday with Arrow, and then last night, with um, DC's Legends of Tomorrow. I've watched all of them. I enjoyed all of them. DC's Legends of Tomorrow in particular is just wacky. It's fun. It's it's really, it's a, it's, it's a joyful ride is what I would call it. And um, seeing all these characters come together, we now know the real reason why Rip Hunter brought them together. If you haven't watched it, I'm not even going to say anything. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it for you. But all I can say is it was it was quite a tearing down moment in in some ways for for for, for our legends, so to speak. Um, as to the real reason why Rip Hunter brought them together, and um, it's it's good. It's good so far. I am loving it. I mean, obviously we're already one episode in, and it's it's amazing. It's really good. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. We did get some cameo appearances by characters from uh, Arrow. I won't say who, but I'm sure you'll probably guess who anyway. But uh, honestly, if you've seen it, I'm sure you liked it as well. It was brilliant. Supergirl, that show is just increasingly getting better. And watching that particular small clip, seeing Martian Manhunter flying with Supergirl, just showing her how to manoeuvre and use her technique while she's flying, just... That was beautiful. It really was beautiful to see. It was. It's great, and I'm sure um, David. Uh, D yeah, David Harewood. Harewood is having a great time playing both Hank Henshaw and John Johns, and you know, obviously shifting into other characters at the same time as well. Um, and and Kara is um, 
Well, she's still she's still standing on her two on her own two feet, but still learning. She's she's going to be learning for a long time now, and um, yeah, she's got she's got a lot to learn. But with Winshot as well admitting his love for Kara, that's going to be a, an interesting one. We don't know how that's going to go down the road, especially since his father, aka the Toy Man, appeared this week on the show. It'll be interesting to see how uh, how he, Winshot Junior progresses um as the as the as the season goes on um the flash again amazing um i'm still not sure about wally west he's he's very he's a hothead basically he is a hothead and um yeah he's he i guess he just needs to be brought down a peg or two but you can kind of understand his position and the reason why he does the things that he does but eventually he's going to need to see the other side of life essentially and that's where joe's going to come in i think joe's got the ability to instill compassion and um you know patience and whatnot into wally to get him to learn the other side of how to deal with you know pain and anguish and all that sort of stuff um yeah, again, without giving too much away of what happened in the episode this week, the, you know, Wally has a lot to learn. He really does have a lot to learn. And um, I really liked the, um, what was I going to say? Was it the conversation between Cisco and Harrison Wells of Earth 2? Those two, they're like, they're like two peas in a pod, if I'm going to be honest. They really are. It's amazing the way that they go on. You know, here you've got Harrison who's just stone cold, hard faced. And there's Cisco trying to be all, hmm, confident and happy-go-lucky but at the same time still taking the sort of like a back foot on Harrison you know and just yeah plus did we see the return of the reverse flash yes we did why is he back how is he back we'll find out next week I'm sure <laughs> and Arrow um we now know what's happened to Felicity um we've also seen what's going on at the grave um with Oliver and Barry when they were at the grave and we now know who it isn't in the grave but it still begs the question who is in the grave and I think it is someone that is still close to Oliver but who is it we'll never know <laughs> well we will know eventually four months from now as it said on the on the episode this week and um Obviously, Oliver's seeking vengeance and revenge, rather, against Damien Dark, but anarchy has become the thorn in their side. And let's just say things definitely took an interesting twist in the episode this week. And, uh, yeah, it's going to... it's gonna. It, I think that has set up the rest of the season. It's basically set up the rest of the season. What happened in, this, in the episode this week has set up the rest of the season, I think. Um, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what Oliver does in terms of getting back at Damien Dark. So that would be good. Uh, um, I think I've spoken about all the TV shows now, haven't I? I mean, let's get back to the movies anyway. I do want to talk about Wonder Woman. And when we saw the footage, I watched the footage and I was like, this is amazing. The, the setting is World War One. This is a coming of age, as Gal Gadot mentioned um, in, in the video, that it's the coming of age of, of the character. And even Patty Jenkins said that she's got love, kindness, empathy. They're not going to use that to tear her down. That's basically going to be like her, what what makes her Wonder Woman, you know. And it's still so surreal that come June 2017, in fact, the dates have now been fully confirmed, um, that Wonder Woman is going to be released on uh, June the 23rd, 2017. And Justice League Part 1, is going to be out November 17th, 2017. They're going to start filming Justice League Part 1 in April of this year. That's going to be awesome. And then I think Wonder Woman is still filming. So I don't know if by the time Wonder Woman's finished filming, then she, Gal Gadot is going to straight away go into um, Justice League Part 1. But I'm sure there's going to be a break because obviously they've got to do the promo for um, Batman v Superman throughout March basically <laughs> so they're going to be busy for all of March at least for the first you know in sort of like the middle of March onwards um so either filming's gonna for Wonder Woman's either gonna come to a halt or it will still run its course or it might just finish probably before 
um, you know, the promotion and the um, and the whole screen junkets and whatever, the press tours for Batman v Superman begins sometime in March. Um, but it's still so great that we're getting this. And just watching that footage, as I say, uh, I wasn't sold on Chris Pine as Steve Trevor. However, I do feel like he was the right fit. I'll make more judgment once I've seen the movie next year. Um, but just the fact that we're getting a Wonder Woman movie just makes me so happy. It really does. It just makes me so excited. And the fact that Warners have actually pushed that boat out to say, right, we're getting this Wonder Woman movie done. Something that they should have done almost 20 years ago, but they're doing it now. Better late than never, guys. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, they're doing it now, and I'm sure it's going to be incredible. Um, obviously, we've got more footage from Batman v Superman as well. I've actually stopped watching TV spots as of a week or two ago. Um... And then the last TV spot I saw was the one where the Batmobile was coming round, Superman standing there, the Batmobile hits him, gets crashed. And then also the one where Lex Luthor greets both Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent as well. And that was it. I haven't watched any others since then. Yes, I have watched the footage from the CW DC Films Presents that they did this week. But other than that, I haven't seen any other TV spots. But the footage didn't really give much away, so I was happy with that. Um... But just seeing Kevin Smith and Jeff Johns talking about the DC extended universe, they're like two kids in a candy store. It's like all of this talk that they're doing, talking about Aquaman, Justice League, Cyborg, The Flash, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Joker, Suicide Squad, everything. It's like realisation time. This shit is happening. Okay? This shit is happening. There's been too much going on this week. I still can't get my head around what is going on. But this shit is happening, kids. It really is happening, and I'm happy for it. Um, on a downside, sorry about this, but it's got to be said. Um, Grant Gustin released a statement on his Twitter um, profile page yesterday. And it's he took a photo of a statement that he had written down. And he posted it to Twitter... Basically, people have been hating on the casting of one Ezra Miller, who's going to be playing the movie version of The Flash. Um, he's set to appear in Justice League Part 1. We may see a cameo appearance of him in Batman v Superman. That hasn't been confirmed yet, but we might see him. Um, but he is going to appear in Justice League Part 1, and then his own film will be coming out in 2018. Now, so many people have been throwing their arms up in the air about this guy. I don't know much about it. I don't know anything about Ezra Miller. I've never heard of him before till now. Well, at least till he was cast uh, last year um, to play The Flash. But I've never heard anything about him. I don't know what films he's been in. I think it was in Perks of the Wallflower, which I know is quite a popular film. But I've never seen anything that he's been in. But I'm not making judgment. Because after watching the um, video of the footage that they showed, the concept art of The Flash, and he was talking, he was describing about The Flash and how he gets his powers and stuff, and I thought to myself, you know what? This guy could could do it, you know, for the movie version, the guy could do it. And Grant Gustin sort of echoed that sentiment that he's happy, he's, he's standing, he's getting behind Ezra Miller becoming The Flash. Yes, we've got the TV version and Grant's doing an amazing job on that side of things. But unfortunately, yes, Warner Brothers haven't decided to translate him and even Stephen Amell as Green Arrow onto the big screen. They're doing things differently to Marvel, okay? It's not the same. They're doing different universes, is what DC are doing, which is fine. I'm happy with that. DC is all about the multiverse. If you read the comics, you will know that there is a multiverse out there for DC. Different versions of Superman, different versions of Batman, different versions of Wonder Woman, different versions of the Justice League. It's that simple. So for people to send hate about Ezra Miller to Grant Gustin expecting that he's gonna show it and share it with people nah that's not being a fan okay that's not what you call being a fan you don't do that yes you're you might not like someone like Ezra Miller playing a character as beloved as the Flash just because we've got Grant Gustin already doing a good job on TV does not mean you should send hate to Grant Gustin and say to him, please share this because we want you to play the Flash on, on the big screen and not this Ezra Miller character. Some people have been really, really horrible about Ezra and it's like, guys, why? And incidentally, two years ago, like today, 
Grant, uh, Stephen Amell released a statement on his Facebook page, something similar about him being a Green Arrow on the Justice League movie, DC Extended Universe. You know, he said something similar in that he appreciates the sentiment, he appreciates that fans want him to be on the big screen, but he's happy working on TV. He's happy doing Green Arrow on TV. That's his bread and butter. That's what he loves doing. No need for people to be slating Warner's DC or anybody else, or if someone else plays a Green Arrow on, on the Justice League film or something, let them do that. That's fine. Okay? You can't call yourself a fan if you're going to be throwing and spewing hate towards someone that we admire, someone like Stephen Amell and someone like Grant Gustin, we admire what they're doing on the TV screen, but to send them hate about other characters or other people that might be playing their characters on the bigger screen, not cool people, not cool at all whatsoever. So anyway, I just wanted to say that because I had to get that out there, but there you go. So moving forward, <laughs> um, like I said, it's been an awesome week for DC and um, looking forward to what we've got for this year. I mean, two big DC films, Batman v Superman already, and obviously Suicide Squad out in August. Um, and obviously we've also got Deadpool, we've got X-Men Apocalypse, we've got Captain America Civil War, we've got Doctor Strange as well. This year's going to be big for comic book films <laughs> and superhero films altogether. But, um, but for DC and Warners, this is it now. 2016, I think, is going to be their year. Marvel has had quite a lot of um, exposure, and that's good. I've enjoyed what Marvel have brought out, but this year... It's all about DC. All about DC, yo. <laughs> but yeah, it really is all about DC. So, um, awesome stuff. Awesome times are coming, people. Awesome times are coming. Um, February 4th. I've got to mention this now, because if I don't, then I will kick, kick myself for it. February 4th, I'll be making a special video announcement. Okay? I'll give you a bit of a brief lowdown right now. That's when I'm going to kick off the Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice competition. And it's going to be running from February the 4th all the way through to the release date of Batman v Superman, March 25th. So put it in your calendars, people, February 4th. Be right here, back on this channel for me to explain the rules, how the competition is going to be run, how you're going to be able to enter. Yeah, pretty much everything. And I might even give an indication as to what prizes will be given away. And they're going to be pretty awesome. They will be pretty awesome. They might be as awesome as this t-shirt that I'm wearing as well. So, who knows. But given the amount of serious merchandise that is, that is getting released between now and, say, end of the year, for all things Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad, there's a lot on offer, people. It's going to be some serious prizes on offer. Serious prizes. Oh, my God. I think I'm going to spend so much money this year, I will be broke by the time it's March. It's that simple. <laughs> I mean, I'm due to go to Florida this year as well with, with, with my girlfriend, but I think, I think we might as well skip that because I'm just going to end up buying so much crap to give you guys. I say crap, but you know what I mean. Awesome crap to give you guys for this competition. And also, I'll be doing a competition for Suicide Squad, but... As the time comes nearer to that, I'll explain more. But yeah, February 4th, ladies and gentlemen, be here for it. It's going to be spectacular. Right, that's it from me. I'm going to stop there. And um, yeah. <laughs> wow. DC, Warner Brothers, this is it. This is your year. It's our year now. It's our time. In fact, just what a time to be alive, to be a comic book geek, just to be a nerd altogether. This is it. We're cool, people. We are cool. Right, I'm going to leave it there. I've babbled long enough. Thank you all very much for watching. See you all very soon. Bye.